If you could solve this problem pretty quickly without the aid of a calculator, well, that's a pretty good indication that you have strong math skills. Let's take a look at the question. We have the square root of parentheses, seven squared plus three, all of this to the fourth power. Now, if you're not quite sure you can solve this problem, don't give up because you too can still find the solution. It just might take you a bit longer. But we do have a multiple choice question here and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 52, B is 2704, C is 104, and D is two times the square root of 13. All right, so once again, no calculators, but if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm gonna show you multiple different ways to solve this problem. And again, how quickly you can do this all depends on your math level. Now, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, here is our question. We have the square root of parentheses seven squared plus three, all of this to the fourth power. And the correct answer is one of these right here. Okay, so let's take a look at multiple different ways to solve this problem. Now, if you're looking at this and you said, I have no idea uh, what the answer is, and you might be you know, kind of down on yourself for not knowing how to do the problem. Well, what should you do if you're saying, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm going to take a guess, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, that's exactly what you should do. So for those of you that are math students or still have to take math exams, the worst thing you could do is leave a math question blank. So just take a guess, because here you have a one out of four chance to get the right answer. So never leave a math question blank. But uh, in this particular problem, the best uh, strategy obviously is to know the math and we're not gonna be using our calculator here. So what's going on? Well, we have this square root. So we have to know a thing or two about square roots. We also have some powers going on here. So we have seven to the second power uh, or seven squared. And then uh, we have a fourth power here. We also have some parentheses and we have some addition going on. So the first thing that we want to kind of understand is the correct order to do this problem. Okay, so we need to do this problem in the right order. So let's go ahead and talk about something called the order of operations. So in mathematics, things like addition, uh, subtraction, multiplication, and division, these things here are called mathematical operators. Now, in this particular problem, we have some other things going on. We have some parentheses, we have some powers, we have a square root. So what do we do here? What is the correct order to do this problem? Well, that brings us to something called PEMDAS, which is effectively a checklist for the correct order of operations. So when you have a math problem with more than one operation, you need to know the correct order. So let's quickly review the correct order by looking at this acronym right here, PEMDAS. Obviously these letters stand for something. So what we have is a checklist uh, that goes from left to right. So P stands for parentheses. You're gonna start from the left. And if you have any of these in your math problem, you're going to address them. You know, so basically you're gonna do this in order. So P stands for parentheses, but uh, it's not just these type of parentheses. It could be these kind of brackets like this. So these are what we call grouping symbols. Okay, so uh, like these uh, numbers right here, for example, seven squared plus three are grouped together by these parentheses. Now, the way this works is if you have a math problem and you have parentheses inside of another set of parentheses or brackets, you always do the innermost parentheses first and kind of work your way out from there. Okay, so obviously the first thing we need to do is work inside of the parentheses. And that's gonna bring us to our second thing here, and that is E, and E stands for exponents, but you can think of that as powers, okay? Now, when you have a power like seven to the second power or seven squared, that little two here, the little number to the top right is called an exponent. The bottom number is called the base, the entire thing is called a power. So E is power. So do we have powers in our problem? Yes, indeed we do. We have seven squared and we also have this fourth power, but we have to work this problem 
following the order of operations. So we got to work with inside. We got to work inside of the parentheses first before we get to this fourth uh, power. Now, of course, I'm kind of giving you some big hints on what we're going to be doing here, but let's go ahead and continue on with our checklist. So M, D, A, and S stand for, well, M is multiplication, D is division, A is addition, and S is subtraction. So it's kind of logical to think, well, hey, you know, if this is a checklist and we're going from left to right, the next thing is multiplication. And then after all multiplication is done, then it's going to be division. That's not the way this work uh, works. Excuse me. Uh, this is one of the most confused uh, things in basic math. So you got to pay attention so you don't end up looking like this person right here. So uh, the way this works actually is M and D is a group. Okay, multiplication or division whatever you see first from left to right. So if you have multiplication, then division in a problem, for example, if you had like seven times two divided by 14, well, we have multiplication first from left to right. So we're going to do multiplication, okay? But if I had 14 divided by two times seven, here I'm going to do division first because that's what I see first from left to right. Okay, so addition and subtraction works the same way. So we have to keep uh, PEMDAS in mind through the entire you know, process, each step of the way uh, doing this problem. Now there's some other things that we need to know about square roots and properties of square roots. And depending on your knowledge of mathematics, this is gonna be a very easy problem or you might have to work a little bit harder, but as long as you can get the right answer, that's what counts. Okay, so here is our problem, and in your brain, you just want to keep that PEMDAS in mind. Now, if you want to write it out on your paper, that's fine first. So you're going to ask yourself, all right, do I have any parentheses? Well, indeed we do. So that means go inside of the parentheses and get all of that done. Okay, so we're not going to think about this fourth power or the square root until all of this math is done inside of the parentheses. Now, once we look inside of the parentheses, effectively what we have is another math problem. So it's like a math problem inside of a math problem. So we're just going to go through our checklist. Do we have any more parentheses? No. Do we have any powers, exponents? Yes, indeed we do. We have to uh, do seven squared first. All right, so what is seven squared? Well, by definition, when you square a number, you're just simply going to multiply it by itself. It's so it's uh, going to be seven times seven, which of course is 49. All right, so that is our first step. So we have seven squared, which is 49. So we have 49 plus three. But again, we're not done uh, working inside of these parentheses. So we have to finish this up. So 49 plus three is 52. Okay, so here is where we're at. We have 52 in parentheses to the fourth power, and we're going to take the square root of this. Now, uh, some of you might be saying, well, you still have parentheses. Uh, are you done with the uh, PEMDAS part or the P part of uh, uh, PEMDAS? Well, yeah, basically, when you have parentheses and there's no more uh, work left to do, well, then effectively you're done with that. So what do we have? Well, we have a power next, and we have a square root next. So here, this is where this problem gets interesting. So what does it mean to take 52 to the fourth power? Okay, well, let's go ahead and talk about this right now. So powers and exponents, very, very interesting. And again, depending upon your level of math, you can approach uh, this problem, you know, the rest of this problem in different ways. Okay, so here we go. So we have the square root of 52 to the fourth. So 52 to the fourth is this. So an exponent when it comes to powers is saying, hey, take this number right here, 52, and multiply it by itself four times. So 52 to the fourth power is literally 52 times 52 times 52 times 52. Now here, if we're kind of, uh, you know, kind of um, being smart or you know, at least um, efficient about solving this problem, one thing that we don't want to do is just start doing all this math. We're like, all right, I'm going to do 52 times 52, get this answer. Then I'm going to take that answer, then get 52. You don't want to do all that multiplication just yet. So uh, as I indicated, depending on your level of math skills, you can you know, do the rest of this problem pretty easily. Okay, so what we could do is say, well, 52 uh, to the fourth is uh, 52 times 52 times 52 times 52, but we could group these together because this is all multiplication. So what we have here is 52 times 52, which is the same thing as 52 squared, and 52 times 52 is also 52 squared. 
So really, I can think of this problem as the square root of 52 squared times 52 squared. Now, you might be saying, hey, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, that's great. How is this going to help us out uh, solve this problem? Well, I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, so if you have a good understanding of the properties of square roots or the kind of rules of square roots, you'll know or you should know that you can break up a square root uh, as two individual or more um, or individual square roots over the factors. Let me give you a simpler example here. So if I have the square root of 10, I could think of 10 as being equal to uh, 2 times 5, right? So the square root of 10 is the same thing as the square root of 2 times 5. So there is a rule, which is called a property in mathematics, that I can take up this big square root, take this big square root, and break it up to individual square roots over the factor. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 5 is equal to the square root of 2 times 5, which, of course, is equal to the square root of 10. So here I could take this big square root and break it up into two individual square roots being uh, separated by multiplication. Okay. Now, this is really cool because the square root of 52 is simply going to be 52. Okay, or excuse me, the square root of 52 squared is going to be 52. But let's take a look at a simpler example. So anytime you t uh, take the square root of a number squared, it's simply going to be the number. So here I have the square root of 3 squared. Well, what is 3 squared? 3 squared is 9. The square root of 9, of course, is 3. But uh, we don't have to go through all this process. We just look at the pattern. The square root of 3 squared is 3. So when you're taking the square root of anything squared, it's just that number. So for example, the square root of x squared is x. Okay, so here the square root of 52 squared is just going to be 52. So here we have the square root of 52 squared times the square root of 52 squared. So there's multiple ways to approach this problem. So the square root of 52 squared we talked about is going to be 52. So we're going to end up with 52 times 52. So at this point, we need to um, kind of do some good old fashioned arithmetic because we don't have our calculator. So we have to figure out what 52 times 52 is. And so here we go. So two times two is four, four times five is 10. So I write that, put my little X here or zero, depending on how you uh, learn multiplication, five times two is 10, carry the one, five times five is 25, plus one is 26. I'm gonna add all these down, all these numbers in the column manner. I end up with 2704. All right, so don't you just miss doing all this arithmetic. Now, many of us, I was learning all this good stuff way back like in 1976 or 77. It was a long time ago. And if you don't practice arithmetic because we're using calculators all the time, you're going to forget these skills. So don't feel bad if you forget or if you've uh, forgotten how to do basic multiplication, you know, how to work with decimals, fractions. This is a really important uh, part of learning more advanced mathematics. So if you need to review basic math, check out either my Math Skills Rebuilder course or my Math Foundations course. I'll teach you everything you need to know. But there is our answer, 2704. Now let's go back to the problem, okay? So here, let's say we're working the problem down and like, all right, we're looking at our options. So, you know, as we get to a certain point, uh, we know that we have to multiply 52 times 52, right? So here, uh, for those of you that are test takers, if we're trying to figure this out, we can just start eliminating answers. So like 52 times 52, well, it's definitely not gonna be 52 and it's definitely not gonna be 104, right? Because 52 times two, would be uh, 104. And this number here is like two times the square root of 13. Well, let's just take a number that we know. Let's take the square root of nine, that's three. So two times three is six. So maybe this is like seven or eight, doesn't make a difference. This is nowhere near you know, what the answer is gonna be as a result of 52 times 52. So you can take an educated guess. Sometimes you don't even have to do the work and this can matter, you know, especially if you're under time pressure on an exam. So the only answer that makes sense here is 2704. But another thing that we could do is just do some estimation. So we have 52 times 52. So let's just kind of estimate, let's just round these numbers to 50 times 50. So uh, depending on, again, your um, math skills and how well you can kind of work with basic number operations, uh, you can kind of estimate this quickly. We can just say, okay, I'm gonna need to add 
two zeros. I have a zero, and a zero here, or a zero here. So five times five is 25. Add two zeros, I get 2,500. Or you can think of 50 as five times 10, and 50 as five times 10. So I can just multiply five times five, that's 25. 10 times 10 is 100. So I literally have 25 times 100 or 2,500. Now 2,500 is going to be pretty close to what 52 times 52 is, 52 squared. And you can see 2,704 is pretty close uh, to the answer, okay? Now there's one more thing that I want to cover here with you. And depending on your level of math skills, um, you could have taken this route. So let's kind of back up uh, to this part of the problem when we have the square root of 52 to the fourth power. Now, one thing that you need to understand is that uh, taking the square root of a number is the same thing as taking that number to the one half power. Let me show you an example. All right, so if I'm taking the square root of nine, this is literally uh, nine to the one half power. Okay, so we call this rational exponents. And what is nine equal to? Well, we can think of nine as three squared. So the square root of nine is the same thing as the square root of three squared, which is the same thing as three squared to the one half power. Now there is a property of powers and exponents. Again, depending on how much math you know, and we're gonna be using this in one second, but to simplify this, when you have an outside exponent to a power, all we do is multiply that outside exponent to the inside exponent. So two times one half is one. So our answer here is three to the first or three. Now, of course, we already know that the square root of nine is three and nine to the one half is three, but this is a kind of a easier way to see that. So we can kind of use this fact uh, to solve this problem. So we have the square root of 52 to the fourth power, okay? So I'm gonna take this entire thing to the one half power because that's what it means. And now I'm gonna multiply this outside exponent to this inside exponent. So one half uh, times four is two, right? So now we end up with 52 squared. And of course we can do a quick estimation and get the right answer from there. All right, so again, do not feel bad if you uh, made a mistake. My videos are all about learning math. And uh, the thing about math is that you're not gonna get better unless you practice. And making mistakes is part of the learning process. So never feel bad if you don't understand something. And uh, hopefully this little video gave you some encouragement to review some basic math. Again, basic math is not so basic. And it's been my experience that a lot of people who struggle in math uh, struggle because they never really got the basics down. So do yourself a favor and go back and review, you know, arithmetic and stuff. It's actually pretty cool stuff. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.